Hi, and welcome to Noise Vortex. Today's video is a new episode of Looking Back, and the album I want to talk about today is Portal's Ion. Even though this album only celebrates its second anniversary this year, so it's not any sort of special anniversary, I've always wanted to talk about it and back when it came out in January 2018. I never got around to review it or talk about it, so I wanted to use this opportunity now to dive a bit into it. Portal is an experimental death metal outfit from Australia, and along with Incantation, they are one of the prime influences of the cavernous death metal sound, which was popular around the middle of last decade, which is kind of surprising considering that Portal have actually been around since the late 90s. Since then, Portal have become this sort of revered entity in the death metal underground with their extremely low-tuned and murky type of death metal and their uh, eccentric live performances. The portal is open. And I still remember when I first listened to their 2007 album Outre and its intimidating otherworldliness was so off-putting that I kind of disliked it, but also very fascinating, like that classic metal experience of something that is extremely terrifying, but also intriguing. And uh, ever since then, um, I've, I've kept an eye on Portal. Ion is Portal's fifth album, and while their previous output has been relatively consistent in its uh, murkiness and distorted, low-tuned sound, Ion is actually a pretty strong departure for them because this is a straight-up technical death metal album. In fact, this is one of the things that makes Ion such an interesting album, because Portal used to be known for their extremely washed-out and cavernous, low-tuned sound, and here they come out with a completely stripped down and raw technical death metal album, you know, like all the distortion is gone and uh, it really makes you wonder how that change in sound came about. And the story behind the album is a really interesting one, especially when you consider that the band had another album completely recorded, designed, fully packaged, ready to go and decided to scrap it. And in an interview with Bardo Methodology, guitarist of the band Horror Elogium actually explains how they made that decision. As he describes it, the band had the album fully recorded and ready to go, and then went on to tour before the album was announced or released. And during the tour, he came to dislike the material they had written for that album, and also speaks of an experience that convinced him that their sound had to be completely reshaped. Once back in Australia, he got to work immediately, and within just one year, Ion had been completed. And when talking about Ion, I want to start with the album cover, because this album has a really strong concept, and the cover, I feel, is really representative of the type of sound you can expect when going into this album. The album cover for Ion was made by Zbigniew Bielak, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, who has previously worked with bands like Imperial Triumphant, Ghost, Kraft, or Gorguts, and in this piece he presents his view of a dark steampunk metropolis. In the picture we see labyrinthine rows of unnavigable buildings covered in machinery as deadly blasts of electricity stretch between the coils. The first impression this cover gives is the imposing view upwards from a street canyon into this site, and uh, further inspection actually reveals that there is no real sense of proportion or perspective in the image. It's sort of Escher-esque in the sense that you can't know what you're looking at, where you're going, or where you are. And Horror Elogium describes that the album cover mirrors the statement of the music on Ion in the sense that it's destructive power channeled towards inhuman goals and that the old guard, the uh, sort of shapeless, formless entity that the band envisions in their music, has seized control and created this dystopia, which is the setting that the album takes place in. Now moving on to the music on Ion, the first piece on here is Nth. Uh, this dark ambient intro sounds like a field recording of what we're seeing on the cover here with uh, those ominous strings and the sounds of high voltage electricity uh, that slowly swell until the first proper track of the album abruptly cuts in. ESP Ion Age comes out with frantic guitars that sound like revving engines as the vocalist, the curator, reverses into the mix with his characteristic hazy vocals. And the guitars here sound like they're being contained rather than played like a possessed piece of demonic machinery that's just barely being kept under control. 
after the first third of the track, which sounds like machinery going into overdrive, the band actually slows down and we hear some sort of more lucid moments that also feature more of the conventional portal sound and means of creating an atmosphere, which is intensified on the next track, Husk. And Husk is probably the most melodic song on the album, as far as we can even talk about melody in the context of Portal's music. There are a lot of swirling guitars on here, which are backed by those swelling cymbal and tom rolls, which creates that cinematic rising effect, and also gives the track that classic Portal atmosphere. Other songs on here, like Frex, are in the same vein as ESP Ion Age with those skittish guitars that sound like my sanity is just melting away as the song increasingly disintegrates into complete delirium. Or the extremely schizophrenic revolt of Vault, where any emerging structure is quickly shredded by interferences. And Revolt of Vault, together with the last two tracks on the album, features these bass drum rolls that sound like muscles spasming under electric shocks that get increasingly intense until in the last track, Old Guard, they are so intense that they must be digital or at least digitally manipulated. Closing track, Old Guard is actually the longest song on the album with almost 10 minutes, which is about a third of the total runtime of the album. And while it starts out sounding like most of the other tracks on Ion, it slowly grows noisier until only these estranged guitars remain. From this emerges a distorted opera sample which ends the album on a strangely sad and emotional note. Because this sample has a hopeful tone but through all the defacement and distortion it sounds like a memory of the past, a relic found at the end of a ruined world. Alright that's it from me, but what do you think about Portal or Ion? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. If you do, remember to hit the bell so you get notified about new videos as they come out. Over here right next to me you can find a playlist with all the previous episodes of Looking Back. Thank you very much for watching, have a good one and I'll see you next time.